So um, what about fiber? Because, you know, the, the heart disease, we covered that. The fact that nutrition yeah. science, as you said, is not really a science because of the epidemiology. It's an ideology. We yeah. covered that. What about yeah. fiber? Somebody told me the other day that I should have a salad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything out of my YouTube well. channel. Let's talk about what the exact requirement on a daily basis for human beings to thrive and survive and have great bowel function is in terms of grams of fiber per day that's required. Same number as carbohydrates. Not one gram of fiber ever is required by the human enteric system. Okay. In fact, if anything, the evidence would point in the direction of fiber being contraindicated, meaning don't do that. Um, there is really one and only one even vaguely well-controlled sort of pseudo-clinical study available in the literature. It's the one that Dr. Paul Mason from Australia talks about a lot on his channel. It's the one where they took 64 individuals with, here's that word again, idiopathic constipation. So these are people who are presenting at the outset with constipation. These are people who are having a bowel movement sometimes once a week sort of thing. And they're obviously experiencing bloating, bleeding, um, inflammation, all sorts of really nasty things with their enteric system. Um, they're, they're chronically systemically inflamed. They're not healthy people. This is, it's not going well here, boys and girls, is what we're saying. They're bloated all the time. Uh, yeah, bloated, uncomfortable, in pain, yeah. full of gas, you know, all of this nonsense yeah. that... that... And, and by the way, I want everybody to pay attention now to what you're going to say, because there's a trend now with regards to bloating. Let's normalize bloating. Bloating is yeah. normal, you know? So... Yeah. Pay attention to what Professor Bart K is about to tell us right now. Yeah, well, number one, bloating is not normal, not normal at all. Anyway, here's what they did. They split the 64 idiopathic constipation people into four otherwise reasonably homogeneous, meaning similar groupings within the groups. They had four groups of, of individuals out of their 64 total individuals. They told group A to increase their fiber. Increase your fiber is what they told group A. They told group B to maintain the exact same diet that they had been eating before they presented. Control group, basically. They told group C, we want you to half your fiber intake. They told group D, we want you to remove every single gram of fiber from your diet report back in two weeks or whatever it was something i can't remember the exact time frame anyway here's what happened group a the people that increased their fiber their symptoms of their idiopathic constipation got worse they got more bloated they had more anal bleeding they had less bowel movements they were more gummed up, they were more uncomfortable, they had more pain, more discomfort, more chronic systemic inflammation. Everything got worse because they increased their fiber. The people that continued with the same diet, the same exact amount of fiber, nothing changed. Shock, horror. That's what control groups do. The people that halved their fiber had basically a 50% reduction in all their symptoms. And the people that removed every single gram of fiber from the diet whatsoever had full and complete remission of all symptoms, every single one of them, without exception. Whoops. Oh dear. 100% cure rate. 100% remission of all symptoms in every single subject. None of them had a single remaining symptom after that. I think it was a two-week period. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh dear, exactly. whoopsie daisy. Exactly. So the people that will say, yeah, but hang on, you need, you need to feed the good bacteria in your guts with fiber, they'll say. Uh, they need short chain fatty acids, to which I say, yes, they do. What kind of short chain fatty acids would those be? 
which most people have to go and look up because most people that think they're also very clever and want to talk to you about fiber and its requirement don't know the answer to that. So they will go and look it up and then they'll come back to me and, and proudly say, I've looked it up. Yes, what's the answer? They say butyric acid. I say, great, butyric acid, fantastic. Um, what happens when you don't consume any carbohydrates in your diet at all? Oh, well, you go into a state called ketosis. Do you, I say. And what, what is one of the major ketone bodies that's produced during ketosis? They go, oh, beta hydroxybutyrate. Wow. I go, ah. <laughs> Do they realize oh. it? Do they like realize it at that point? <laughs> Once you know, they say usually they still need to explain stuff. That will, so what? I so, said, well, you just said butyric acid. Right. Yes. Okay. So if you're going to oxidize butyric acid for energy in your enteric cells in your colon, the first metabolic step is that butyric acid or butyrate as it is actually. First of all, it gets transmuted metabolically into beta hydroxy butyrate which is what ketosis generates directly the only difference is the beta hydroxybutyrate is fed to the enteric cell from the blood side and not from the enteric side the cell doesn't care what side it comes from it's still the same stuff okay well i said that to garth davis one day in an interview and he went yeah yeah <laughs> it was as funny as hell there yeah. you have it. <laughs>